In this video, I wanted to try something a little bit different and just talk you through my thought process of how to edit a shot in Insta360 Studio so you can make a shot which looks like this. So here are the raw files from the Insta360 ONE X2 and there are two INSV files per 5.7K 360 video, one for the front lens and one for the back lens. So if you do see file names that are similar, don't delete any of the files because you do need both of them and don't rename them because you will struggle to import it into Insta360 Studio. So first I'm going to drag and drop one of these files into Insta360 Studio and it will automatically load up. Now the first very important thing you need to know is that the view tab is for editing immersive 360 video and the free capture tab is for editing reframed 360 video. So in this case, we're going to use the free capture tab to make a 4K video for YouTube. Next, I'm going to trim this shot shorter. So I'm going to scroll across the timeline until I find where I want my shot to begin and I'm going to click and drag the preview window to look around my shot. And I want this shot to start when I begin to bring the selfie stick up, which is about here. So I'll click mark as trim start. So now this is the beginning of my shot. And now I'm going to find the end of my shot and the end of my shot is just before I stop waving. So that will be about here. And I'll click mark as trim end. So now this is the end of my shot. So now that I have the correct shot length, I'm now going to reframe this shot. So I'll click at the beginning of this shot. And now I'm going to reframe how I want the beginning of the shot to look. I want to get rid of this fisheye distortion. I don't like the curves on the bridge. So I'm going to add a pivot point. It does say keyframe, but pivot point and keyframe is exactly the same term. So I'll add a pivot point and I'm gonna click the linear view. And this will make sure that the lines are straight and get rid of the fisheye distortion. So I'm gonna reframe to how I want the beginning of the video to look. And I want it to look under the bridge, which is a very unique view because you can't capture this view with any other camera apart from a 360 camera, which is pretty cool. And I'm going to scroll forward till the stick is in the air, directly above us, over here, and add a pivot point. So now if I play this back, we go from a very low angle under the bridge to a bird's eye view of myself and the 360 guy. And I want to hold this view for about a second so we can admire the bird's eye view. And then a second later, I want to turn this into a tiny planet. So I'm going to add a pivot point and tap the tiny planet button. I want to adjust this tiny planet. So I'm going to click and drag my mouse down to make it look like this. And to make sure it all fits in view, I'm going to increase the field of view. So now it all fits in the frame. I'm just going to click and drag to make sure it's straight. I'm going to move one second forward, add a pivot point, and just leave the view as it is so we can admire the tiny planet for a second. And then in the next second, I'm going to go add a pivot point, go back to a linear view and reframe to see the bridge. And then go forward a second, add a pivot point and leave it as it is so we can admire the bridge for a second. Next, I want to do a barrel roll 
So we see in a very unusual view of London where it's upside down and then it rolls all the way back to us on the bridge over here. And just to make sure the shot stays looking at us, I'll scroll forward in the timeline and just add another pivot point here. And if I play this back, we now have a shot which looks like this. So the barrel roll was pretty fast, but that's okay. We can adjust the pivot points. So what I'm gonna do is click this pivot point and I'm going to move it further out. So now the barrel roll will slow down. So if I play this back again, the barrel roll is slower and I can slow it down even more by moving the pivot points further out. Let's play it back to check. And now it's slower. So now that I'm happy with this shot, the final thing I'm going to do before I export this video is turn on dynamic stitching. And this will just make sure that we get the most seamless stitch line possible. And then to export your video, click export in the top right hand corner. I'm going to change the resolution to 3840 by 2160. I'm going to leave the frame rate as 25 frames per second because that's the frame rate I shot it in. I shot this footage in H.265, so I will change the encoding format to H.265. And I'm gonna change the bit rate to 100 megabits per second. And for me, I think 100 megabits per second is a good balance between not having a massive file size and getting the best video quality possible. I'm going to turn on remove grain and I recommend you turn it on whether it's day or night footage with the 1X2. I do think it makes a big difference and improves how your footage looks. Here you can change your file name and rename it to whatever you want. And the file path is the folder you want to save your video to. So once you found your folder, click open and then click OK to export your video. And then just wait for it to finish exporting. Now let's say you wanted to make another version of your video for Instagram Stories, then this is pretty easy. All you need to do is tap the aspect ratio button over here and change it to 9 by 16. And just like that, you now have a 9 by 16 version of your video. And then you can make the necessary adjustments to make your video look better in that aspect ratio. So for example, at this keyframe, I'd probably zoom out a bit more. So I'm going to increase the field of view to 156 and I'll do it for the next keyframe as well. Change the field of view also to 156 and I'm just going to check these key frames to make sure frame looks nice. So here I'm slightly off center, so I might just change the pan angle and just make sure I'm in the center. So now if we look back at the changes, it looks much better for a nine by 16 aspect ratio. Then you can go to export Leave the resolution and frame rate as it is. If you're going to upload this shot straight onto social media, then leave it as H.264. But if you're going to edit this shot further and you shot your video in H.265, then change it to H.265. Click remove grain. I would change the bit rate to around 50 megabits per second. I'm going to change the file name so I know it's a 9 by 16 aspect ratio video. So I'll just add on the end, 9 by 16. Choose your folder where you want to save your video to. Click OK and then just wait for your video to export. So now you know how to export a 16 by 9 video and a 9 by 16 video in Insta360 Studio. 
The next step is to add to your own music in any video editor of your choice. So I'll show you where you can get free music from and where you can get really high quality paid music as well. This is the YouTube audio library and you'll need to sign in to your Google or YouTube account to access it. You can download unlimited music from this library and include it in your YouTube videos for free. Artlist.io is currently my go-to music library for my YouTube videos and my client work because it has such a great variety of high quality unlimited music to download. The Artlist Music Library costs $199 per year, so it's not cheap and I don't think it's suitable for hobbyists, but if you're someone who makes plenty of YouTube videos and you're looking for new and fresh high quality music tracks, then I would definitely consider Artlist. And if you're someone who makes plenty of videos for clients, then you can use your Artlist subscription to download unlimited music tracks for your client projects at no extra cost. And this is something that I personally do and it either saves me a lot of money or the client a lot of money. I have used many music libraries in the past and there is one thing that Artlist does really well. So under the music tab, there is a section called video theme and you have music categorized under these themes like time-lapse, vlogging commercial, travel and lifestyle. Artlist categorizes the music really well compared to the other music libraries. So for example, in the video that we just edited, I went to the video theme travel and I downloaded the second song, which is called Ultralight. And the fact that Artlist puts the music in the right categories makes our job easier as creators to find the music that we're looking for, which I can't say the same for other music library because they will put the music under several categories so it becomes very generic. I will leave a link to the YouTube audio library and the Artlist music library in the video description. Browse the music libraries, they're both free to play music and have a listen and then download the music you like. That's it for this video, I hope you learned something new. Let me know if this long form content works in the comments below and I'll see you in the next video.